Welcome back to another TV6 Investigates Talks. I'm Matt Christensen, the investigative reporter here at TV6. And I'm here with Heidi Connect, who is our investigative producer and works on our team with us. And today we're gonna spend a little time trying to put some of these deer layoffs in context. Now we've seen over the last couple of months um, some pretty sizable layoffs across Iowa, including in Davenport and uh, at Harvester in East Moline. And uh, this week we learned that there are now salaried employees who are being let go. So we were the first to break this. And so Deer issued us a statement uh, pretty quickly after we uh, contacted them yesterday or on, uh, on Wednesday. And here's what they had to say. They say, as the largest global manufacturer of agricultural equipment, John Deere, like many others in our industry, faces significant economic challenges, rising operational and manufacturing costs, and reduced customer demand including a 20% decline in sales from 2023 to 2024. That's a big drop. Yeah, and uh, I think it's hard for people to remember how big John Deere is when we think about it being a small Quad Cities. It's a hometown company. Uh, this big drop is gonna be really big for the Quad Cities and yeah, so I, I, to kind of put this in perspective, we talked to uh, an ag economist yesterday, um, Peter Arazam at uh, Iowa State University. Uh, he's a professor there and, and, and watches this kind of stuff closely. So, uh, you know, what he told me was, you know, kind of what Deere said was there, there's a big, big turn down in, in um, demand for the stuff that they're manufacturing, especially, um, you know, those larger pieces of implement that are produced here in the Quad Cities. When demand goes down, uh, the company uh, doesn't need to pay all those workers to do uh, less work. So it makes, it makes workforce reductions. Now what's different about this time is that it's involving these salaried workers. Because if you spend any time in the Quad Cities, you know that these production worker positions are, are cyclical depending on what we were just talking about, that going up and going down in the ag economy. Yeah, and these workers are used to that. They expect that, that's part of their job. However, the salary of workers might be a different deal. Yeah, Deere did uh, say earlier this year that it was gonna be making salaried workforce reductions. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it isn't a huge surprise, but it came down yesterday and uh, we don't know the scope of it yet. So Deere hasn't said exactly how many uh, people are affected, but, um, you know, based on folks who've contacted the newsroom and, and stuff that, that I've seen and people that I've talked to, I mean, it, it's, it's sizable, I think. So mm -hmm. um, now, Arazam, you talked about, uh, you know, what this means for the Quad Cities. Um, I asked them about that. And, and you know, besides the job reductions, he pointed out that Deer hires some of the best, best workers around. And when those folks are out of work, um, it's gonna be hard for them to find new jobs in the Quad Cities. Uh, at at uh, comparable jobs at that anyway. kind of level, right, right, right. So you're gonna likely see some really good workers leaving town um, to pursue jobs elsewhere. Uh, Orasm also told me that um, there will be you know significant ripple effects um, to other businesses that support Deer. So uh, you know a lot of people are employed in the Quad Cities in um, shops that produce materials for Deer, either you know parts or tools or whatever it is uh, and uh, or you know other things and 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 so those companies might be now thinking about reductions in their workforce too because they're not going to have to produce as much stuff because deer doesn't need it so you see this this trickle down a little bit and and kind of what remains to be seen is you know you know how this is going to affect things but uh, yeah because uh, we don't have uh, numbers yet this they just started this. They don't have any official information out. Yeah, but we do on the previous production worker numbers. Do you yes. want to, you crunch those? Um, in East Moline and in Davenport, I think August, the end of August, uh, 211 in Davenport and 279 in East Moline. Uh, those are the numbers they turned into Iowa and Illinois um, workforce departments. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Like, let's let's talk about that for a second because um, you know the companies that, are, that lay off fifty or more people have to file reports with the state. They're called mass layoff reports, and um, you know they have to 
uh, they come out monthly. So what we're seeing now is in this latest month, we're getting you know final actual numbers on those production workers, but we're not going to see those salaried worker numbers listed until the next report comes out next yeah, month. Yeah, the uh, Illinois report came out for June. Just that's the most recent one, and that had the East Moline numbers in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, obviously we'll continue to track this. Um, like I said, D two deer has said previously, um, you know, the number of production workers and, and, and people affected. Uh, I, you know, we'll see if they say, uh, you know, how many salaried workers were affected here too. But, um, you know, another thing that um, Arasm talked about a little bit was the gl global influences in the markets right now. Um, what's happening in Ukraine uh, uh, you know, is, is driving down uh, demand for tractors there, and that's a huge, huge grain producer uh, in Europe. And then, um, you know, domestically, uh, you know, we've got high interest rates, we've got really high input costs for farmers, and we've got, uh, you know, uh, crop prices that are, are not in a position to be able to support those other two factors. So, you know, you take out one of those one of those legs on the stool and it, it's just going to fall. So um, that's the situation we're in right now. And, um, you know, I think deer is, is, is doing its best to try to navigate through this. Um, you know, they've offered severances and things like that. Um, you know, but this is still really upsetting for, for people and for a lot of families. Um, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, one family where a husband and wife are both deer employees and both got laid off on the same day. So, um, you know, just the personal effect of this is is going to play out here too. Um, this goes a lot farther than just numbers and, and figures and jobs. So. Yeah. So uh, you know, we're going to continue to track this. I'll bring you an update when I get the the number of folks who are actually let go, um, and uh, we'll continue to track this issue too. Um, how do you watch the numbers? And I'll do some reporting, and we'll be back with updates as we learn more. So in the meantime, I'm Matt Christensen, this is Heidi Connect, and I want to thank you for hanging out with us for another TV6 Investigates Talks.